Welcome to the Defeat the Drama podcast, where you'll learn tips, tricks, and strategies to help you gain clarity, find purpose, live boldly, and defeat the drama in leadership and life. Host Kirsten E. Ross is known to many as the drama-free queen. She is the undisputed expert of transformation. She'll move you from resigned, resentful, and overwhelmed to focused, engaged, and empowered. Welcome to the Defeat the Drama podcast. I'm Kirsten Ross, your host, and this is episode number 26. Before we get started today, I just first wanted to say thank you so much for listening. I know you're super busy, and I also wanted to say thank you to those of you who have written to me to say that you're finding value in the podcast. I so appreciate that. Um, That is my goal. I just want to be of service. I really am on a mission to defeat drama, and the more people who listen and use the tools and the strategies that I'm sharing, um, the more we can defeat drama and hopefully all... uh, have a have a better situation as a result. So um, so thank you. Thank you. Today, I'm going to be talking about the five keys to igniting a great correction conversation. So a lot of times it's really difficult when you have an employee who either by attitude or aptitude is not functioning the way that you need them to function. And, you know, at times employees will employ stay stuck strategies. So they might be defensive or deflect or make those conversations really, really difficult. And too often as leaders, we tend to back away and say, I don't want to talk to them anymore. But you know, the reality is your business will be better, your customer service will be better, your life will be better and more enjoyable at work if you have those conversations. So I want to share just five quick strategies to help ignite really great correction conversations so that you get the outcome that you need. I'll also say that using these five steps, along with the six simple steps of great delegation that I shared in episode two, will really rock your world if you have an issue or challenge in this area. Uh, there will be a link from the, uh, the show notes for this podcast this episode to the episode two. So if you go to defeatthedrama.com, click the podcast site and then go to show notes for this page or go directly to episode two. You can hear the six simple steps. All right. So I want to share just a super quick, I always like to share, this is a good news story. There are some where um, the employees didn't choose to make the right choices after, but a quick good news story. I was working with uh, uh, a large company, multi-location in more of um, kind of a maintenance kind of a industry. I don't like to say too much about the clients. And a supervisor in, in one of their locations was really struggling. And he was, the first day I met with him, I felt so bad for him. He was just completely overwhelmed. He just said, I'm so stressed. I have way too much on my plate. And so our first conversations were talking about, you know, why that was, you know, did the team not have any more capacity or was he not having them help enough? And so it really boiled down to one, he wasn't using the six simple steps of great delegation, which helped him a ton. And then two, he needed to start holding his team accountable for when he did ask them to do things and they didn't follow through. So he first employed the six simple steps and then he employed the Um, igniting great correction conversation steps. And between the two, within the first just few weeks, he was a completely different leader. So if you're struggling in this area, I want to assure you that if you follow these steps, life can get better. So uh, the first step is one, during a correction conversation, it's your job as the leader to maintain control. And you have kind of two things going on to maintain control. One is you want to maintain control of the feel of the meeting. So you want to keep it calm and professional. So that starts with you. Um, deep breaths. I always encourage my my clients, you know, if you need to write, write or type everything down that you're going to say, that's fine. Even if you read it, it's fine. But be prepared and know exactly what you're going to say. Take deep breaths and stay calm. I call it leading from the platform. You want to be ready to just uh, not get knocked off center, for, you know, regardless of how they react. You want to be calm and coming from this place of I'm just trying to help you. So um, come from your calm, centered place and 
watch the volume of your voice, watch the pace that you're speaking. Um, you know, so, and if they start elevating in any way, you need to ask them to bring it down. So if they start getting loud, I need you to watch the volume of your voice. And if you speak quieter, sometimes they will match your volume. So if you instead, you know, if they start getting louder and then you start getting louder, then they're going to escalate and get louder than you. So don't do that. Do the exact opposite. Talk even quieter. And hopefully that will, they'll bring their tone down as well. And you can also ask them, I need to watch you to watch your tone. I need you to watch the volume. I need you to calm down right now and set the expectation up front. We're going to have a conversation. It's going to be professional. I'm going to share some information with you and then we're going to be done. So, you know, set the expectation up front and then help them maintain it throughout. So that's one of maintaining control. The second is you need to maintain control of the topic. So a lot of employees, a stay stuck strategy they'll use is to deflect. So they want to talk about everything else under the sun other than the topic you're there to discuss. So I always visualize that you're going down an expressway and you're trying to get them to ride with you and they keep trying to ditch off onto an off ramp. You don't want to do that. So if you're trying to talk about their performance and they're saying, well, you think I did that, but what about Susie Q? What did she do? If they start doing that, you say, you know what? We're not here to talk about that today. We're here to talk about you. So you want to bring them back. Just keep bringing them back. Or you might say, that must be really difficult for you. I'm so sorry. But you know what? Today, you know, I let's talk about getting you some help with that. But for right now, we need to talk about your performance here. Or maybe they'll talk about something that you do need to address down the road. So you know what? Thank you so much for bringing that to my attention. I will make a note of it and investigate. In the meantime, in our time here during this meeting, we really need to focus on you. So you can address it very quickly, but bring them back, bring them back. So the one maintain control is all about maintaining the feel of the meeting and then maintaining the objective or the topics. Don't let them sideline you into other areas. Even if they start talking about their rough life, I'm so sorry you're dealing with that. Let's get you some help. In the meantime, let's focus on fixing what's going on at work. All right, the, stec- the second step is state your desire for their success. So another stay struck strategy is for them to be angry with you or act like you're out to get them or you're gunning for them or those kinds of things. And so you want to just alleviate that as much as possible. Now, they're going to believe what they're going to believe, but you know, take away that option with some logic if you can. Um, Again, they might not rely on logic for everything, but just share with them. I want you to be successful. I want you to be a productive member on this team. I want you to be on this journey with us, whatever you want to say, but just continue to reinforce you're on their side. Everything you're doing is for their best intention that you want them to continue on the team, that you hope that they hear you today and they and you hope that they make the right choices going forward because you're going to be laying out a plan. Then the second one is define success. So you as a leader get to define what success is in your department or in your business. They don't get to define it as an employee. And a lot of times I see leaders give away their power to their team Anytime you don't address issues or um, where their actions or behaviors are not aligned with your business objectives, that's really a leader giving away their power and allowing their team to decide how they're going to function, the team to decide what success looks like. So that whole slippery slope of like, let's just use a simple example of coming in late for work. If that's not addressed, you're kind of saying as a leader, it's okay, show up when you want, or it's fine to be 15 or 20 minutes late or 17 minutes. Um, You know, they're defining what success looks like. Success looks like showing up when you want and then doing what you do once you get there. But you as a leader really need to define what success is. 
So, and sometimes it's not going to be convenient for them. Um, you know, you get to define how they spend their day, what they focus on, which projects they're going to work on, and it's not up to them. So wherever this, em- an employee that you're having the conversation with is falling behind, you're going to define what the success marker is. You know, here's what it looks like. It looks like showing up five minutes ahead of time. So you're actually sitting at your desk or at your space or at your register when you are ready to work. So you're ready to work when it's time to work. Or, you know, you're getting your projects done on time or you're having this percentage of accuracy. So you get to define what success is and then let them know where they're falling short. But then the good news is the next step is you're going to lay out a plan. So I'm defining what success looks like and I want you to hit this target, but I see that you're missing some skills or, you know, your attitude isn't where it needs to be or you're showing up late from lunch. Whatever it is, you're going to lay out a plan. Now, I talk about attitude versus aptitude. So attitude, there's not really a plan for that other than change it. I mean, you can't, I mean, someone's not going to take a class to smile and be friendly to your customers or respectful of their coworkers. That just needs to happen. Um, But maybe they're a billing person and you have a billing system that they're kind of not using as efficiently as possible, or they're making too many mistakes. So for something like that, or an x-ray tech is having too many errors, or their the quality of what their, their output isn't where it needs to be. Those kinds of things will have a plan. So whether it's taking a course online or going to a course or shadowing an employee or sitting with you, whatever that is, lay out the plan. So here's what success looks like. Here's where you're not there. I want you to be successful. And the good news is I'm going to invest in you getting what you need to be successful. So you're going to lay out the specific plan how long it should take, what are the deadlines. You're also going to lay out, you know, again, if it's a longer term thing, if it's change your attitude, you might do a check in in a couple days. How's it been going? Check in with their coworkers. Is it better? But if it's a taking a class or shadowing, you're going to also schedule as part of the plan, some update meetings. So the, some check-ins, get them on the calendar right away or have them be in charge of getting on your calendar at certain intervals so that you can do some check-ins, be of support, and see how they're doing and making progress. Then the last step is let it go. So once you've clearly defined what success is and gotten them to a place where you're having a good calm meeting where everyone can be heard, mostly you, and you're laying out the specific plan of how they're going to get, how they're going to, you know, narrow the gap of what they need to do and how they're currently performing. So you're going to get them the resources they need so they have the opportunity to be successful. And from there, they have free will. They get to make a choice and they'll either choose well or they won't. But by having the conversation, you're giving them the opportunity to be successful. You're giving them the resources. Not all employees will take you up on it. Some of them will continue to use their stay stuck strategies to perform the way they're performing. And you have to let it go. You can't control the outcome, unfortunately. While in most cases, we want our employees to be successful and stay with us, Sometimes they're not going to make the right choices, so let it go. And then as a leader, do what you must to put your business first, your customers first, the rest of the team first, so that you can be successful with your business. So those are the quick, simple, five-step strategies for igniting a great correction conversation and giving every employee the opportunity to achieve success. So thanks so much for listening today. I hope you have found value today. As always, uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please do. And if you haven't left a review, I really appreciate all of those at either iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you're tuning in. And if you need any additional help in, uh, you know, implementing any of the things that I'm helping with here, that I'm sharing here, then please contact me. There's a contact form at defeatthedrama.com you know, shoot me a message and let's, let's connect and see how I can help you. My goal is for you to achieve all your objectives in your business. So until next time, make it a great day. 